Welcome back to Sunless Sea. I'm currently at Varkas in the southeast. My medium term goal is basically just to deliver the hydrogen that I got from the Iron Republic to the Empire of Hands to aid in their escape. But before that I want to check out Varkas and I'm probably going to hit up the Chelinate before going to the Empire of Hands as well. And then after the Empire of Hands, assuming I have enough time in this episode, I'm also going to go to the Isle of Cats. And pop on over to Wisdom and spend all of my money rescuing that dude to continue the officer's quest line. But for now, let's just check out Varkas. Alright, so it's been a while since I've been here. This is the place of many, many lights. The place of mirrors. Which means... Before I go any deeper, I think what I'm going to do is replace my pages plus 7 with my mirrors plus 7. Yeah, bump up the stats a little bit on that. Because I'm pretty sure that's an important stat for this place. Mirrors. Because this place is just covered with mirrors. So, let's do that. <laughs> 91. Beautiful. Alright, let's go in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wave me through. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. So again, I get to do a bunch of things before I have to go. Before it's nighttime and I have to sleep. I feel like I did both of these before. I know I talked to the guard, and I believe I talked to the fungus carter as well, so let me just continue. And, uh... Let's venture further than the outer district. Now, I can't remember what the heck I did here. I think I visited the hospital, or, or the temple. Was the time? No, it was a hospital. Yeah, I definitely visited the hospital. I remember that very distinctly. Ooh, what is this pilgrimage? Oh, I need a bunch of stuff. Respect the guard. Nurse's approval. Yeah, so I need to do this other stuff before I can do that. Um, oh yeah, the jewel-turbaned youth did want me to come to the mansion, which is pretty freaking creepy. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm walking into a trap, but you know what? Whatever. I'll be fine. I've got mirrors 91. I can always just, like... I'm so covered in mirrors that I can just move my shoulder in the right direction and, like, a, a light beam will glance off of my shoulder into his eyes and I can escape. Perfect. It's a plan. Alright, so he invited me. You are not entirely sure what you were expecting from the jewel-turbaned youth's invitation. Perhaps a candlelit dinner and a genteel seduction. It turns out to be an evening of card games and chilled wine with his rather eclectic collection of friends. But as the wine is drunk and the cards are played, the gathering takes on a certain political tone. A raggedly dressed artisan begins complaining of the Agnahotri's trade restrictions. A novice priest points out contradictions in Mahir's mantras. A stone carver questions whether his daughter should also have to follow in the same profession. Will you? The jewel turbaned youth stares at you, licking his lips. Will you tell us a story? Uh, sure. Hmm. <laughs> I can invent a fanciful tale. Now, of course, it uses veils, though. It actually doesn't require much veils. I've got a 44% chance of doing that, doing that, and that's with my terrible veils. If only used mirrors. Okay. Do I want to involve myself in? Politics. I probably don't, because I don't really know anything about the damn politics in this place. I'm a complete foreigner. But sure. It might be nice to be honest, especially to a group of people you've never you'll never have to meet again. You wet your throat with tart wine, and fix your eyes on a carved lintel and begin your own somewhat convoluted tale. At the end, they look slightly dissatisfied, slightly relieved. We were hoping, the jewel turbaned youth clears his throat, that you would tell us, um... He pitches his voice lower. Lies. You are a little insulted. After all, it's not as if you make a habit of telling strangers of your past. I mean no insult, he adds, placatingly. We only have true stories here in Varkas, and no inventions, no made-up tales. Okay, so they wanted they actually wanted fanciful tales. I guess they're bored. 
I mean, what does he mean they only have true stories here in Varkas? I mean, does he just mean that, like, generally? Or does he mean, like, literally, like, fiction is banned or something? That wouldn't surprise me. Oh. I can actually try to invent some things. Okay. So if I stay, it's just going to eat up more of my time here. Do I want to try my hand? 44% chance? Sure. Uh, ah, oh, failed. Perhaps the wine is muddling your tongue. Or maybe the fungus smell is too distracting. You can't... Uh, you can't seem weave the threads... Wait, you can't seem weave the... What? You can't seem weave the threads of your story together into a hole. Your hero, a dashing Z captain, turns unexpectedly into a drowny. And so you pack him off to the tomb colonies, much to everyone's confusion. <laughs> Nice storytelling. The grammar on that's weird. I don't know if it's actually wrong or just kind of weird, but you cannot seem weave the threads of your story. You cannot seem. There should be a two there, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. Alright, let's keep trying it. Damn it, I failed again. <laughs> he, look, my dude never learns. He made the exact same mistake. He turned him into a drowny again. And sent him off to the tomb colonies. Come on. There we go. Whoa, that gave me a searing enigma. Holy crap. Oh, that's worth like a thousand. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to sell it, but I'm pretty sure that's worth uh, essentially about a thousand. It's basically a captivating treasure worth. And of course, I'm going to use it for other stuff like talking to the Carnelian exile. Holy crap. Just for telling a tale? I've got a lot more tales to tell you. I'll be here all night. Oh, or not, actually, because actually the tower bell sounded, but anyway. Um, your crew would have enjoyed this tale, and probably added their own asides and embellishments. Still, you couldn't have hoped for a more appreciative audience. They gasp and moan and shudder guiltily at your story, as your story comes to a climax. Afterwards, the jewel-turbaned youth takes you by the hand. His own is shaking, and his skin is clammy. We are forbidden from the trickery of storytelling in Varkas, he tells you hoarsely. I've never heard anything so sublime. They're forbidden from storytelling? So, yeah, fiction is banned. That is really weird. Okay, well, now I have one part of the pilgrimage to Amara... Amaradri? 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 I'm going to go with Amaradri. So, I'm closer to being able to do that. I've got the jewel turban youth's love, basically. Now I just need these other things. So, obviously, one for the hospital, one for the guard, and then whatever that is. Agnahatri's interest. Who or what is Agna Hotri? I don't know. I really want to talk to the Carnelian Exile now that I have this Searing Enigma, but there's other stuff to do. And it looks like I still have more time, so what should I do? Go to the guardhouse and talk to the guard? Let's do that. Ooh, I can hint at the Jewel Turban Youth's activities. <sighs> Do I really want to get involved in politics like this? Start playing them off each other? Nah. No, 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 no. That could very easily ruin my Jewel Turban Youth's invitation to my, my quality with him. I don't know if the quality can go down, but it probably can, and I don't want to do that, so no. Let's see, what else can I do? Ask what's going on. I don't have that, can't do that. Train with the guards, straightforward. Oh, 100% chance. Could earn the guard's respect that way. Let's do that. Let's train. There's a formation of new recruits doing basic forms in the courtyard. The sergeant does not object when you slip into line. But he doesn't treat you with any particular gentleness either. You practice hand-to-hand -hand combat for a few hours, and end up on your back more often than not. They fight in an unfamiliar, light-footed style. A few of the more advanced recruits a duel with curving, twin-bladed scimitars. Interesting. 
The sergeant grunts at the end of your session. You are bruised and possibly concussed, but quite satisfied with your morning. And you think they may have learned something in turn. Whoa, that just gained me two iron. That was really, really worth it, considering that didn't cost anything. That is extremely good. That That is really good. Damn. Alright, got one respect to the guards. Is that the end? Do I have to... Oh, yep. It's time to go to the inn. Man, I've already got two of these four things that I need. I might be able to actually do this right now. And if I just leave and go around port, you know, and, and wait for another day to pass. Alright, let's go to the inn. What is this? The wine mazed lamplighter. Or the kitchens. Or the courtyard. I think I went to the courtyard before. Or, or maybe I tried to not sleep. I'm really curious what this is, though, so let's do this. The wine mazed lamplighter. He is dressed in saffron robes, and is indeed pouring wine down the throat of a very attractive, dark eyed boy. You could tell him his sister is looking for him. Uh, wait, what? His sister is looking for him? Wait, do I have a quest for this? I don't remember this. Uh, hey, what's going on? He starts up in horror, spilling burgundy red wine everywhere. His young companion looks irritated. I'm late, he shouts. Myher, forgive me. The Agnahotri is going to skin me alive. He pumps your hand in gratitude. Thank you, Tomas. I won't forget this. Here, take my Arc Jewels. The Tardy Lamplighter. Oh, this must have been from last time I came here. I totally don't remember this. I just have the vaguest recollection that the last time I came here, there was something about this. Yeah. I guess. Anyway, that's pretty cool. So I can maybe get a menace if I try to actually sleep. Because I was told I should not try to sleep here. Do I want a menace? Doesn't sound good. Hmm. I mean, I could use the menace somewhere. Where was it that I could use it? Was it with the guards? I think it was. Let's do it. See what happens. <laughs> I gained 10 terror. Alright, that's fine. I'm only up to 29. You fall into sleep easily despite the bright light. But your dreams are full of whispering, glittering smokes. Mere vapors that coil into reflection warping shapes. You see your limbs bend, your skin sloth, your eyes twist. You wake with your heart pounding. Your nostrils are full of the fungal rot smell of Varkus. Your body is as it always was. But somehow this is not as comforting as it should be. Alright, dawn has come. Alright, I am going to hang around here. And wait, because I really want to go back there. I managed to get two of the four things that I needed to do the pilgrimage thing. So I might be able to get the other two, maybe. Wait, was it two of the needed things that I got, or one? I know I definitely got one. Did I get two? I know I upgraded my guard, but I don't know if that was enough. I don't remember. Whatever it is, it's uh, I definitely want to go back. Ooh, you know what? I can talk to the Carnelian Exile now. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, hold on, how many supplies does it take? One? Um, that's fine. Yeah, I can spare one supply. Okay. I'm kind of scared. Because... She has glasses on. I don't know what's behind her glasses. And she has, like, a little fang coming out. So I think she might be a vampire... Or something. So she's kind of scary, but she's also kind of adorable. So the question is, do I ask her to remove her glasses or not? I'm worried there's gonna she's gonna have like reptilian eyes behind her glasses or something. I'm kind of scared. 
I'm kind of I'm kind of scared, but I'm kind of excited at the same time. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Invite her to dine with you, and ask her to remove her glasses. You'll need to tempt her with the very finest gossip of the Z. Eyes unconcealed. She removes her glasses, folds them neatly, and places them on the table, then meets your eyes. Her own eyes are marvelously bright. The irises are amber. The whites seem to be flecked with gold. Yes, she says. I've been touched by the dawn machine. I believe you already knew that, or you wouldn't have asked me to remove my spectacles. I might be wrong. In either case, nothing has changed, now that you know. We will still be wary of each other. She taps her thumb against her index finger. I am always the same, do you see? I do not change. I proceed on the same path I always have. I am only one choice, and I will, o and I will be content only when I have no choice at all. Now, let's eat and talk. You promised me something special, and I will give you what little I can in return. I'm kind of disappointed. Not disappointed that she's not a monster, but disappointed that I don't actually get to see her eyes. She took them off and the art doesn't even reflect it. I want, I want to see her beautiful eyes. Well. Alright, so she's been touched by the Dawn Machine. And her eyes are unnaturally bright. And what in the heck did she mean by this? I'm always the same. I don't change. I am only one choice, and I will be content. Only when I have no choice at all. I don't even know what that means. She didn't say, I have only one choice. She said, I am only one choice. Alright, well, I gained one mirror. Thank you. Okay, I can do a bunch of things. <laughs> the last option. Throw her out of your cabin. For God's sake. All you wanted was a meal and a chat. And she's doing philosophy on you. <laughs> Stop doing philosophy on me. It's actually part of my background. Wasn't it? Wasn't I like a, a poet or something? I think. Alright, accept or protest. So if I protest... Each choice you make in future will depend on this one. The ship goes where the captain sails, and where the captain chooses to sail depends on where you've been. Oh god, I don't want to get into philosophy. It's just confusing. If nothing has changed in response to your choice, then your choice was that of a pawn that chooses to move forward. No, let's get some good debate going over this meal. Narrowed eyes. Perhaps, she says. Perhaps our choices determine our heading. But at last, when the lamps go dark, there is only one direction. One day, we'll go there together. She won't be drawn further. She picks up her knife and fork. Between mouthfuls, she tells you something of the starved men and their wars on the roof. The arts of flesh-shaping that they practiced and debated. I enjoyed this, she adds at the end of the meal. We should do it again, when you're ready to talk about salt. Uh, what do you want to talk about salt? I've got some salt right here in the shaker if you want. Oh, you mean the god. Um, what about the god? Now I'm extra scared. Did getting touched by the Dawn Machine give her, like, a vampire tooth? Is, or is that completely unrelated? Gained a heart. Nice. Gained a secret. Nice. And an extraordinary implication. How extraordinary. Bread and salt. Okay, unlocked when the gods of the disease. Stone, storm, and salt is... Is... Is? Is what, game? 
I can't stand it when it's just like an unfinished sentence. Unlocked when the gods of the Z, sown storm and salt is... Silence. Is what? Unlocked when the gods of the Z, salt's attention is... Is what? I don't get it. Do I need salt's attention? I, th I don't think I have salt's attention, right? I remember, I think I got rid of Salt's Attention when I went to the uh, Sphinx Stone and I did the whole ritual thing. But I might have gained it back when I allowed the the Salt Statue, whatever, on board. That one of the, Remember I took the Raggedy Fellow on board and he had like a, a shrine to Salt and I let him keep it and I think that gained me Salt's Attention? I don't know if that was after I got rid of Salt's Attention or what. I don't know. Anyway, I can't do it. So, for another time. Let's actually see. If I have Salt's attention, where in the bloody hell would it be? Would it be a curiosity? It's so confusing where stuff goes. Would it be a curiosity? Or would it be... It wouldn't be an accomplishment. Would it be here? And where would it be? I guess here. Okay, I have Stone's attention, I have Storm's attention. I have Stone, Storm, and Salt. I, what does that even mean? I, okay, I don't think I have it. So confusing. Man, I was thinking I'd get to the Empire of Hands in this episode, but I don't know, I don't even know if I'm gonna leave Varkas in this episode. This place really does have some pretty extensive storylines. I really want to go back to the Jewel Turbaned Youth to see if I can get more Searing Enigmas. I want more. Hello! Okay, so what do I need? Yeah, I do have to. Alright, so I kind of want to go back to the Jewel Turbaned Youth just for the Searing Enigmas, but, uh... I already have enough of his attention that I don't need to do that to do this. I don't even know if I want to do this pilgrimage, but... I mean, it's a thing I can do, so I kind of want to do it. So let's just focus on the other stuff. Let's get the dour-faced nurse's approval. So let's go to the hospital. Okay, I remember I went to the fungal infections ward. I remember going there. Oh yeah, that's right. I can offer the services of my people. Nah, I don't want to let him go, though. Although... Is that permanent? Like, are they going to leave forever? Or is it just temporarily? It's probably just temporarily, right? Right? Like, I wouldn't be permanently getting rid of them? I don't... I think so, but I think I have to offer, like, I think I have to help her. And if I do it myself, there's a pretty damn low chance of success. Whereas if I just have an actual doctor come aboard, then obviously they can actually do it, and there's probably a 100% chance of success. Let's try other stuff first. I've been to the Fungal Infections Ward, I d I've done that, let's... Mm. <laughs> Should I check out the mirrorless room? The war that is locked several times over and the dourface nurse looks uncomfortable when you mention it? Sure. That is where we keep the mirror mad, she says with a shudder. The mirrors whispered to them. And instead of going to the sun priests, they whispered back. And you just abandon them in a locked room? We don't despise them. They are given food and water. Tending the mirror mad uses up almost as much fuel as Meyer's temple, because they can only be lit with direct lamplight. We don't dare let them near any mirrors. She shudders again. The mirror mad are worse than Thomas. Or Tomas. They no longer serve Meyer, but other powers. Those that speak in dreams and visions. She refuses to say anything else. I hope I don't become that. Alright, been there. Been there. Let's check out the open ward. 
You see patients sprawled on their beds, playing card games and chatting to visitors. Most of them have minor injuries. Most of these wounds happened outside the city, on hunting expeditions or trade missions. The dour-faced nurse explains severely, raising her voice. Which is why most of these malingerers are guards. The patient nearest to her pretends to swoon. But what would I do, away from your gentle, tender gaze, O oh, fair nurse? He clasps his hands to his bosom. Surely I would wither and perish. We'll see who withers when I give you your sponge bath, she retorts, and her patient draws up his blankets meekly, though his mouth still curves up in a smile. Lost two tear, one fragment. Okay, not really worth that much, but interesting to see these different places. Okay, I'm going to assume that offering the services of my people is not going to mean putting them ashore permanently, because I'm pretty sure it would say if that was what I was going to do. Let's do that. Just want to check I didn't lose him. No, I didn't. Okay, we're good. You've won her trust. She's prepared to come ashore. The dour-faced nurse watches you carefully as you assist the campaigner in cleaning wounds and changing bandages. She gives you a satisfied nod. The guards are pleased to have a new attendant, and call you a nurse Tomas with warm, welcoming mockery which makes you feel part of their crew. They try the same thing with the campaigner, but only very briefly. You see the campaigner and the nurse exchange a glance of challenging, cordial respect. Good work, the dour-faced nurse says at the end of your shift, handing you each a cup of steaming mushroom tea. It revives you greatly. Do you detect a hint of tree sap liquor at the bottom of the cup? And something else. Something of the South. Damn, look at that. I gained one iron, one heart, and one mirror. This place is amazing. Can I just, like, volunteer my services forever and just keep leveling up my stats? Because I would totally do that. Alright, and we have our approval. Oh, uh, wait, what? Why did I come back here? That was weird. Took me all the way back to the beginning. Alright, we've got everything except uh, Agnahatri's interest. Okay, well, I've been to uh, everything except Entertainment and the Temple of Myher. And I'm guessing Agnahari is probably... Yeah, it's, pr it's got to be related to the temple, so let's go to the temple. It lies in the Sacred District at the center of Varkas. I think I've been here before, haven't I? I think I have. Um. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember reading this. The rest of the city has to make do with mirrored light and reflections, but Meyer's most sacred space is filled with hundreds of lamps and lit candles of hard-packed phosphorescent fungus. Yeah, so tons and tons of candles at the Temple of Meyer. Also, that's really hard to say. Temple of Meyer. Meher. Meyer. Meyer lemons. Hmm. Alright, what do I do? Listen, dreams of smoke. Oh, I can use my menace. Hmm. Ooh, and if I had Sintelak, I could do something here as well. And blue scent like whatever the heck that is. Uh, let's do this. Dreams of smoke. They seem like something one of the priests might understand. If you had a mind to, t to tell them. The sun priest listens to you describe your dream with growing disquiet. Were you not taught to guard yourself when you sleep in a room full of mirrors? He asks, and then curses. Should priests curse in temples? I cannot believe the Tomas are so ignorant. You assure him that you are indeed quite ignorant, and wait patiently for him to finish another, more inventive round of cursing. There are dreadful powers in mirrors, is his unhelpful conclusion. He gives you a charm of bloodied snakeskin and scraps of paper, written in an angular, unfamiliar script, and tells you to hang it upon the nearest mirror before you sleep. Okay, so it's a 
Dreamcatcher, basically. Now I have a mirror charm. Doesn't help me at the moment, though. It's only going to matter when I go to sleep. So what do I do? Check out the reliefs. Reliefs? 57%. 44%. Check out the shrine. I think I checked out the shrine before. I think that was the thing I did. Didn't I leave an offering of, like, a lamentable relic or something? Yeah. Um, let's check out the reliefs. Every surface of the temple is carved and worked. If you peer closer, the base relief... or Is that bass or base? I think it's base. The base reliefs depict Varkus's fall into the neath. Did I succeed? Oh, I succeeded. Nice. In the first panel, Myher is depicted as the sun, beaming rays of thinly hammered gold onto a surface city both peaceful and prosperous. The five towers are carved with loving detail, barely recognizable without the wreaths of fungal flowers and curling vines. In the next panel, Myher blinks, and the city turns to shards of onyx and jet, slowly crumbling away. Myher then becomes a broad-shouldered, sorrow-faced man stalking the false-starred blackness of the Neath in search of his lost city. His eyes are picked out in orange-red carnelian, and seem lit with inner fire. Varkus, as it is now, is conspicuously absent from the carvings, as if the stone carvers could not bear to chip its fallen outlines. Myher blinked and the city turned to shards of onyx and jet crumbling away, into the neath. Huh. Does that mean Myher, like, uh, left the city unguarded for just a moment? And that's when it happened? That's when it all fell apart? When it blinked? Alright, is that it? Do I have to go? I think that's it. Yeah, I've got to sleep. Alright, let's go back to the inn. Can I use my charm? Oh yeah, there we go. Use the mirror charm. Hmm, I think I went to the courtyard before. Can I go to the courtyard and then sleep? I don't remember. But since I think I went to the courtyard before, let's check out the kitchens this time. The smells of cooking mingle with the fungus rot, but you aren't going to let that put you off your food. The inn's cook makes thick spiced stews of fungus flowers and lotus root, eaten with chunks of boiled cassava and rice imported from inland. But it is the light hungry fruit grown in the city which makes your mouth water. Tart scented oranges and bruised yellow bananas, pineapples bursting with juice, tender coconuts with the silky white flesh scooped out and sap sweet on the tongue. Do you not eat meat? you ask in wonderment and the inn's cook calls to Myher for strength. It is forbidden to eat the flesh of living creatures, he says. Lucky the Varkas I don't fancy the Z-faring life. Okay, yeah, so you can do one thing and then you have to sleep. So let's use the charms. It seems to work. At least you do not remember any particularly vivid dreams when you wake. You retrieve the mirror charm before you wake. Is it your imagination, or does some of the script scribbled on the paper scraps seem slightly blurred? <laughs> Weird. Alright, one more time. I'm pretty sure I'm going to spend this entire episode in Varkas. And that is totally okay, because this place is really interesting.
<clears throat> thank you, thank you. Nice to meet you, guard. Thank you. Let's continue on in. Uh, back to the temple. All right, what do I need to do? So I checked out the reliefs. Done. Did the dream stuff. Done. I should probably just do this, huh? Yeah, do the Agnotri. The Varkasai equivalent of a king or governor. He is overseeing the rituals and gives you a slanted glance. Oh, I failed. You try to slide through the crowd during the Agna, uh, towards the Agna, Agnahotri. Alas, he is distracted by a pilgrim carrying a broken mirror like an injured child. Best not to interrupt. Just gonna keep doing it. And same thing. Damn it! Come on! Balls! Well, time to go sleep again. It's lame. Oh, wait, do I want to do this? Maybe I should just leave. Or do I have to sleep? Because I don't actually have a dream charm anymore. Um. Oh, wait, no, no, I picked it up again. Oh, yeah, we're fine. Okay, let's go to the courtyard again. I think I did this before. Yeah, I did. Lose a little bit of terrors. A couple fragments. Oh, three memories of distant shores. I believe there's somebody playing music. Yep, yep, yep. I've done this before. Use the mirror charm. Lose some terror. Excellent. Alright. Now we wait again. Oh, joy. This should be the last time. I can't believe I failed. What was that? Four, three or four times in a row I failed a 44% chance? It's really unlucky. I know life doesn't actually work this way, but I can't help but feel that maybe that's, uh... <laughs> maybe that's my, uh, statistics evening out after I managed to find Maybe's daughter's mother with the, what was it, a 2% chance when I was at Aram? And I nailed it on my very first try. It's statistical karma. Karma doesn't actually exist. I was going to make music with turning the lights on and off again with the sound of it, but the sound kind of clips out if you press it too quickly. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Hello, hello. I'm sure you're tired of seeing me. I'm tired of seeing you too. Let's go to the temple. Hey, dude, please talk to me. And failed again. Hey, dude, please talk to me. And here we go. You go to pay your respects, and he is at pains to impress upon you that he is no despot or tyrant prince, but rather rules Varkas with his council of sun seers and fire keepers. What do you think of Varkas so far, Tomas? he asks, and you know better than to mutter anything but meaningless platitudes in response. He nods as though satisfied, but you catch him giving you a sharp, speculative look as you wander the temple. It seems you have roused his interest. Or... Aroused his interest, rather. Well, I like making people aroused. Gained a veil. This place is so good for gaining stats, it's amazing. And now I have his interest, so that might actually be all I need. Let's go back. <gasps> there it is! The pilgrimage to Ama... Um, Amara Adrajahard, the place, yeah. The Agnahatri seeks wisdom. The sick are ready to begin a long journey. The young and the restless have made their plans. The swords of the guard have been renewed. The pilgrimage is ready to begin. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. There's really no particular reason for me to do this other than it seems an interesting thing to do, and, well, that's reason enough. Let's go. I wonder if this is going to be really, really long. This actually might be. I mean, it does say it's a pilgrimage. It is hard not to be carried along by the excitement and anticipation of the Varkasai. 
Okay. I don't know what the hell I've gotten myself in for, but here we go. It seems as though half the city has joined the pilgrimage to the Mountain of Light. Wait, we're going to the Mountain of Light? That just reminded me of something. Wasn't there some, like, mountain shard or whatever that I saw at uh, Port Carnelian that you could buy or sell or something? I wonder if this might be related to that. Ooh. I mean, I know I'm on a pilgrimage, but I'm, I, I'm kind of just seeing dollar signs here. Can I take a part of the Mountain of Light and, you know, take some mining equipment up there, just, you know, kind of take a part of the mountain off and take it with me and go sell it? Okay, well, let's not jump the gun here. Pilgrimage to the Mountain of Light, the other half lines the street and hangs out from upper story windows to watch their friends and loved ones depart. Musicians play stirring tunes on polished brass instruments and little calablashed lyres, all undercut with the rhythmic sound of drums. A towering machine piled high with fungus is wheeled to the front of the procession. The drivers sit in a lamp-lit cabin at the front, their faces grim. The Agnahatri raises his hand, and a hush falls over all of Varkas. The mirrored gates slide open, rays of light reflecting jaggedly. Outside, the Elder Continent is dark and hushed and vast. You have the dizzying feeling that it is vaster and onyx blacker than the Untersee, somehow. But that cannot be. Wish us luck, Tomas. The Agnahatri is next to you, at the very front of the procession. His aging face looks suddenly youthful and taut. His eyes glimmer with purpose. You can only nod weakly. The Agnahatri laughs wildly, and then shouts a command, and the machine rumbles out of the city gates. It lays down two thick rows of fungus to either side of it. The lamplighters dart to the very edge of the darkness, and light the fungus with their torches. It blazes up, illuminating the path inland in brilliant, white, rot-scented light. The people of Varkas cheer so loudly, you think your eardrums will burst. The pilgrims stream slowly out of the city in a glimmering procession, leaving it half empty behind them. Ooh, seven memories of distant shores and a secret. The atmosphere in Varkas is deflated, melancholy, after the pilgrims depart. Time to leave? I guess that's it. Ah, my Varkas the Mirrored City quality is now 2. I wonder if that changes anything. Like, if I go back, is it going to be any different? One must wonder. But one will not find out. Today. That one will wait until some... Okay, I'm going to stop talking like the third person. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I think that's a pretty good place to end the episode. I knew Varkas was pretty vast with its story opportunities, and... Uh, well, it's not quite Empire of Hands level, but it certainly didn't let me down. And there might be more to do. If I come back here later, there might be something new. Maybe. Perhaps once they've returned from their pilgrimage, something will be different. Or perhaps when I return, they'll still be gone from their pilgrimage. I don't know. What an interesting place. Okay. So yeah, I think I'll end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and in the next episode, I am going to head over to the Chelinate first, I think. I want to go to the Empire of Hands to deliver the hydrogen, of course, but I want to hit up the Chelinate because it's pretty much along the way. And I think a recent patch said that there's some new storyline possibility in the Jelenate, I think. So I just want to uh, visit that place and see if that's something I can do anything with. If not, then I can always just get a port report. Head over to the Empire of Hands, deliver the hydrogen. Uh, then from there, most likely go to the Isle of Cats, get some red honey. Then go to Wisdom and get the dude from prison to continue the officer's quest. And then after that, probably just go back to London. Hoping I can do all of that in one episode. I think so. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.